everyone, welcome to Fiora, and welcome to this uh, M118 MGS Striker Review, otherwise known as the Golf Cart. You know, with a nickname like that, that there's going to be some people who are going to be offended at me for saying this is not very, this is, I'm going to be open and honest to start this review. I hate this vehicle. I think it's a piece of trash for a lot of reasons, but we're going to go over them talk to you guys about them and you guys can decide for yourselves so for a start there is no other real tank destroyer at tier 8 other than the XMRC let's compare them and then I will compare it to the Challenger 1 Valken and I will compare and I will show you the problem with it against say a warrior so let's get them all set up here and the reason why I'm going to compare it to these vehicles is because the Challenger 1 Valken is kind of a very close match for something it would have to face on a regular basis and also as far as it being kind of designed more like a tank destroyer. So let's start talking tank destroyer on tank destroyer. The striker has damage and penetration and reload just flat out. However, it has less hit points, less armor. Even with the best, slightly better composition, the armor is still a lot more terrible. The cage armor does protect it from heat shells, but nothing protects it from autocannon rounds whatsoever. Whereas the XMRC, if it's facing towards you, its upper front plate will stop autocannon shells all day long. Speed says 99 kilometers an hour. You will never get to 99 kilometers an hour. Won't happen. You will be lucky if you can get the striker over 80. XMRC, not much better. You're lucky if you can get it up to 70. But the point here is it gets nowhere near its top speed ever. Acceleration is terrible on this vehicle. It's god-awful. That 4.8 seconds to get to 32 is nice, but it's going to take you almost 20 seconds to get up to 80 kilometers an hour going in a straight line, and that's not an exagger exaggeration. We had to sit there and play with it to figure out exactly how long it took it to get up to speed. View range is 457 versus 455 on the other tank destroyer, but it has 5% less camouflage. <laughs> Hull traverse is slightly better, but unlike the XMRC, the striker can't rotate in place. Has to move forward or backwards to turn. Cannon depression is awful, except for off the back. And when I say off the back, guys... Your gun must be pointed over this back section back here, this box looking back at the end where these doors are and basically if it's not pointed if it's not pointed between this corner and this corner, this corner and this corner, your cannon gun depression immediately raises all the way back up to 6 degrees immediately. Which means if something gets right up against you or gets close to you and is small such as a weasel or a crab, or even a VBL. You can't get your gun on it. It literally can just sit there against the side of your hull pumping auto cannon after auto cannon round into you and you can't physically lower your gun enough to even do anything about it. And since you're not very maneuverable, you see where it goes, you're, you're just dead. So if something gets up on you, it's over. Accuracy split is slightly better than the way I've got my XMRC set up. I think I can get, yeah, I could get more accuracy out of my XMRC if I wanted, so it's more about the same. Better aim time, worse turret traverse than the other tank destroyer, which means that the increase in hull traverse without the ability to actually turn in place, it actually has worse overall traverse numbers compared to the XMRC, period. And the XMRC is going to become a regular vehicle available for sale. Okay, so you're worse than the other tank destroyer in all aspects except for damage output. And you get like two more meters of view range. What about against a Challenger 1 Falcon that's designed very similarly to the tank destroyer and is a main battle tank you will have to face on a regular basis? Well, your damage output is superior, your penetration's better, that's good news. Let's actually compare you to say an Ariete because this is definitely a tank that everyone has. Penetration's worse, alpha damage is better, damage output is better, okay. But you're not going through anything that's not a weak point, just flat out, or the side of the vehicle where there's no extra armor. 
Reload time is better. Of course your protection's worse, you're up against the main battle tank, but that's not the point here. The point here is to get down into this area. This main battle tank will almost hit the 32 kilometers an hour only a second after the striker does on a wheeled vehicle. That's slow. Main battle tank has better gun depression and when set up properly will have better accuracy. Go figure. Now as far as spotting goes, you're not going to sp outspot any AFVs. Just flat out. Not going to happen. They're going to see you first every time. No matter what. No matter the conditions you were under, you were going to be outspotted by the warrior. You were probably going to be outspotted by the Ramco, which is kind of sad. Because you have almost the exact same camouflage value except for a 1% difference, but then the Ramco has 40 some odd meters more view range, so your 1% difference kind of blows it. And then when you're looking at, say, a Weasel, which is going to be in virtually every single match you're going to be in, it's going to outspot you for, you will just get spotted in this vehicle over and over again, and it will drive you up the wall. You'll think you're safe or that you're far back, and you'll get lit. I've seen it time and time and time and time again. You do get an APS system. That's good news. You do get run flat tires. That's good news. I can't say I much care for this vehicle. I mean, on the paper, it looks good. Or it looks decent and comparable. But in reality, it's terrible. Awful. With two retro flit slots, this is the max accuracy I can achieve on this vehicle without fully upgrading the crew. Which means at maximum I can expect a 0.3 accurate a 0.03 accuracy for a tank destroyer. That would normally be good, but we've seen vehicles that get it down to flat out zero. Furthermore, it just feels clunky and slow. It's big, it's easy to hit. You can't dodge anything at all, and with the isolating turret, your elevation not only because of the design of your vehicle is your depression hindered, but your elevation is significantly hindered. And now we're going to see some of what I'm talking about. This is one of the best matches in PvP I got, period. I'm not trying to be mean, but I played this vehicle for two hours. And I eventually I said, I'm done. This is... This is terrible. This is awful. This is one of the best matches I could get in the striker. And that's going to be saying a lot. When you guys see how this match turned out, it's it's saying a lot. Now I'm speeding it up to get us into the action. So as you can see, I am driving around in my striker. I see the flare, but I keep driving. I see a second flare. I have to keep driving. As you can see on this road, I only hit 75 kilometers an hour. From the time I started to the time I got here, I only got up to 75. On a road! I'm now sitting here deciding what to do waiting for the team to fan out because one of the things you have to do with this vehicle constantly is let the team fan out and the reason this vehicle sucks so much is because it's relegated strictly to long rent to mid to long range support only you aren't quick enough to outflank at this tier you aren't quick enough to really do much of anything except for try to get in some sneaky cheeky shots. And we're going to see that here. I'm going to dive down here. As you can also see, despite eight wheels, this thing does have some, uh, let's call them driver stick sensitivity issues. Now I stop down here and then I get ready and I go around this guy because you know what? Not going to interfere with the tier 10 light tank when I'm in a tier 10 tank destroyer. That's right. You have to fight tier 10s, guy, ladies and gentlemen. Tier 10s with this thing. And it's very consistent about how often you have to do that. I had timed my shot there so the armada would be reloading. But I also know I can't sit out there for very long because the armada's reload is ridiculous for the amount of damage it does. Throwing smoke over my ally because that's the only real thing I can do now. 
There's no real flanking shots to take. Everyone's in forward engagement mode. And I have to duck back down. I mean... This is how it is. I have to wait for an exposed flank or an opportunity to really strike. And I get one hit through the commander's hatch of the Abrams. And then the Leopard 2A7 comes up and finishes the job. And I have to be really careful. I'm in a tier 10 match. These tanks are hitting for half or more of my hit points a shot. If they get a hit on me, I'm fucked. Now there's the cheeky side shot I'm talking about. Just that he got just enough of his underbelly exposed that I got in on the hit. And there's the side shot. And now I'm shooting through his commander's hatch to do any damage. And I'm maneuvering constantly looking for a way to help these guys. Looking for a way to get involved. And I've got no opening. None to speak of really. And nothing really to shoot at. And so, oh yeah, usual hype. Gotta love hype. Get the fuck out, you tard. Is what he said. Just usual things I expect from elite clans, supposedly. But, oh yeah, and the arty is looking to hit me. See? He wants to hit me. I have no armor and he knows it. So you're already bait too, by the way. I'm hoping this guy will come out, and there he is. But I have no shot because he faced his front towards me at the last second. Here comes his arm armata, and I get a free lick in. My lick being for half of the amount of damage he would do if he shot me. And again, I'm trying to get involved, but after two hours of playing this vehicle, I was quickly discovering that it's not very good. Hey, I got a kill! Only because he was facing his rear to me, and that hit the side! That flat out hit the side. That was an HE round! HE did 600 to me! His high explosive shell did as much damage to me as my Sabo shell does back. If that ain't ridiculous. That was not a hull shot, by the way. That shell was a turret shot for minimum damage. That was a turret hit. 524 minimum damage on the turret with a Sabo. Not even kidding. I wish I was. Now I know this uh, this Polish PL-01 is looking to kill me. I'm an easy kill at this point. I only take two, three hits tops in this kind of match to kill. However, I would like to get my gun involved and do some damage. So I'm going to try, but I don't think I'll make it. Nope, won't make it. Are you ready for disappointment, folks? Are you ready for disappointment? Because here's disappointment. This is the best match I could get. 1600 damage. One kill. Middle of the team. Because you're going to consistently face tier 10s and you stand no chance. And th this vehicle barely functions at tier 8, much less facing tier 10s. It just doesn't do it. Nine shots fired. Four actually caused damage. The rest bounced. And I mitigated no damage. I took 600 damage from a high explosive round. If you see one of these things, hurl HE and Hesh at it. Seriously. I am dead serious. Just hurl high explosive and Hesh. You will beat it senseless. But let's go take a look at some PvE gameplay with it. And I'll do this one live. Talking with you about it as I do it.
Now, how do I feel about this thing in PvE? It doesn't have a place. In its current state, the Striker has no place in Armored Warfare. Just flat out. The LAV 600 is lackluster compared to the Centauro 120, which I'm told is getting moved to Tier 8 or 9. Either way, compared to the Centauro line, there's no, there's no comparison. The Striker and the LAV 600 are not worth going to get. You want the Centauro all day long. Has better driving characteristics, has a much better gun, and it hits like a truck. Whereas this striker, I even if I were flinging, it would take a maximum damage heat shell from this vehicle. Which, by the way, you don't even get a high explosive. But it would take a maximum damage heat round. By the way, I was promised frost uh, snake bite, and I got frostbite instead. Take a maximum damage heat round to equal a minimum damage Centauro AP shell. Yeah, that's how puny this thing actually hits for. And you're like, but it has high rate of fire. Yeah, that's nice, but in tier 10 games that you're going to be in a lot, it's just not going to be that great. And, you know, I'm still struggling to get up past 50 kilometers an hour. So here we go. Just plucking away. I mean, in PvE, this can work, but you have to have spotters. And you have to know that you can't get involved in close range combat. Because if you do, you're dead. But if you can stay away, then stay away. Stay away, stay away, stay away. Let your allies do the work. You got to. You're a strictly... It's... You know how there's these main battle tank players who say that anything that's not a main battle tank should be a support vehicle? This is what you get when you actually make a support vehicle. A useless vehicle. You can't make something strictly a support vehicle because it becomes not very useful and not very fun to play. And I'll tell you right now, this has been, one, this has been absolutely the worst vehicle I've played in Armored Warfare for any purpose. Um, in every way, shape, and form. And if the devs are listening... I don't like this tank. Like, I cannot fi figure out its main purpose on the battlefield other than sniping. Because if I'm under fire, I'm dead. And if I try to do anything other than snipe, I'm just going to get ripped apart. So I'm getting in here to get shots in because I don't have any shots from outside the refinery at this point. And as soon as something sees me, I fully there's shots coming at me right now because I have no armor. Oh, he's actually aimed at me. He's not aimed at the main battle tank. He switched targets now. Which means I can get in licks and I have to back up. Take him out. This main battle tank doesn't know how to drive. Cheap shot. Again, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for the cheap shots. Because that's all you can do. All you can do is cheap pinging shots. Anything other than that and you're asking for trouble. As you can also see, I just got up to 40. I've been accelerating for 6 seconds. We uh, Probably close to 7. As you can see, I'm trying to get up to speed. I'm up to 80. Look how long this took. I started accelerating at a minute and nine. I still haven't got to max speed. Remember how I said you're probably never going to get very much over 80? Yeah. Well done, Black this is what I meant. Like the and then I had to make a turn because I ran out of map. There's a hit. I mean, the gun's accurate. No 
but if I get too, uh, I'm staying as far away as possible because I learned the hard way. If I get too close, they're gonna frag me very quickly. And look at that. I take 800 damage from a single hit from this T90. 800. I only have 1600 HP. I mean, I can't afford another hit now. That's how weak you are. You're a two shot. You're just a two shot for most things at your tier. So any ex and without a very high camouflage rating, you're a two shot. So any exposure is so risky it's almost not worth it. You have to just expose that turret over and over again. And this is the type of vehicle that I frankly don't think has a place. Is one that only works in specific conditions. Long mid to long range with just turret exposure and that's it. It doesn't work. It doesn't need to really be in this game, in my opinion, because it just—it's just, it's just bad, a bad design. Am I killing stuff? Yeah, I have the highest kills on my team, but that's only because I'm adhering to this very tight knit niche that the that the striker can fulfill, as you can clearly see. I'm staying far away, or I'm exposing just enough to get a shot off. I can't afford any more exposure. That single shot, I keep going back to it, that one hit was more than half my HP. Gone! Just instantly gone. And now I run into the gun depression problem. I can't get my gun down. So I have to use gun inversion to get enough depression to engage this target. Which gun inversion, for those who don't know what it is, as you can see I'm on the backward slope of a hill. So I'm basically trying to use my elevation to achieve depression. Once I get at a downward angle, I'm now using my elevation instead of my gun depression to be able to shoot these targets. I don't want to back up and just expose my rear to them because my rear is a big flat surface. I can't really tell what way he's facing through the smoke. There it is. So we got a hit there. I, I will never understand how that did not penetrate. Forever just don't understand that one. Uh, he stopped backing up. I'm down to heat shells. And of course. Uh oh. So if you can get a bunch of light vehicles lined up for the striker, it works great. You can just pummel away. Again, keep covering yourself up with the smoke as often as you can. But this is, this is what you really get. It's strictly a sniping vehicle. It's no good at mobile warfare, I will say that. Because you have to find these very specific map spots where you can just expose the gun and turret over and over again. You can't afford to expose any of the hull because it's so big and flat and massive. It's an easy target. You can't go over stuff forward because you don't have any gun depression. In practice, this vehicle just isn't very good. That's the best I can do. And to me, that's kind of sad for a tank destroyer. I can go get my Centaur 120 and rip stuff apart. Now for this vehicle, um, I recommend you ditch the spare parts. You're not going to get tracked. If your engine gets destroyed, you're screwed anyway. Because you're going to drop to zero speed almost immediately. Get an energy drink. You need it to make the crew operate better. 
other than that standard fit here for retrofits chrome barrel and the augmented breech lock flat out just not even a contest you have to have these because the base accuracy on this thing is awful the base accuracy on this vehicle is terrible it's 0.04 in my garage right now if I take these two things off which I can then put back on because it'll save them my accuracy drops to 0.7 at tier 8 that's just a bad feeling inside when you see that when you look over and you see 0.7 accuracy at tier 8 and now you can only get it down to 0.4 with mid-level crew training with high-level crew training you can get it down to 0.3 and 0.3 isn't gonna cut it against tier 10s it's just not gonna cut it and against tier 8s you're barely making it and you still need to really you really truly still need flanking shots over and over again which to get the flank on this vehicle is very difficult because without an AFV supporting your spotting you're gonna get outspotted by AFVs and ripped to little pieces before you can do anything about it. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. My striker review, finally. There's some hits. I don't like it. The auto um, cannon does needs, have the ability to literally dump the clip faster than any other vehicle, vehicle can. Make it function. Hopefully, it with straight the straight up fire spreaker coming up in zero. Look how far I'm out of these bushes. Look at my MBT and tank range. destroyer rebalance ability. This tank oh, will look, function as something better than a strictly support sniper. Mistakes vehicle. have been made. Because right now, it sucks because that's its role. And it, for those of you who are arguing I that everything should that be a support vehicle if you're not a main battle tank, and I got shot at. This is why the, this vehicle is a per prime example of why that's not the case. No one wants to play off. the striker. No one. And because I've only done 672 of my that own damage, role that you want to relegate everything that's not a main battle tank that was to. A well, guess what? No, that should never be a Hello, BM never. M. Because otherwise no one will play them. Yeah, you can outspot easily, outspot AFVs anyway, tier higher than you. that's my thought. So if you weasel. like this video, found it helpful, make sure you hit the like button. So the only like I said, the previous review is right there. It's the BBL, which is an amazing and if you position monster yourself correctly, you that you should all go play. It's what, happened, it's what happens when the French go, we've had enough. And they let you know they've had enough in the most gruesome, horrifically fantastic ways. Lastly, uh -huh. if you like to support the channel, which uh -huh. I need all the support. All you get, that spotting damage. And that's what I'm doing Patreon right page. I am um, not I relying on my stuff to do any real damage. Or I'm relying click on, on the ad ads. at the end of the video and go check out this video sponsor. I don't know who it is, but they may be worth looking at. Dad, Lastly, if you'd like to see more stuff, I'm almost dead. Oh, I took some HEI subscribe. there. See, that's the other problem. A lot of players fire HEI too much. I'm sitting here pumping Sabos. Pumping AP I, rounds because it does a lot of damage very quickly. He hit me with three shots for 77. Day, by the way. I, I hit him with three shots. I do close to 80. Don't even finish it. I do over 80 at least. You can all be upset with me. It's just because I've been too busy to go to the grocery store. I need to go to the grocery store. I need to find time to go to the grocery store. When am I going to go to the grocery store? Good question. I don't know is the answer. But anyway. Hello, Bye. Centauro 120. Wink. I can see you from all the way back there. Rant about grocery stores.